In this video, we will understand the different detectors used to measure the intensity of radiations. Analytical instruments employ these detectors to measure absorption or transmittance of radiation. The detectors in UV visible region of electromagnetic spectrum can be separated as photovoltaic cells or photoemissive cells. These detectors convert the light energy falling on it into electrical energy. The photovoltaic cells don't require external power to perform this conversion. The photovoltaic cell studied here will be a barrier cell. We know that EMR radiations consist of packets of energy called photons. These photons pass on their energy to surface of detectors, which release electrons and a current is set up. Let us look at the construction of a barrier cell. They are constructed using a base plate of iron, which is coated with a thin layer of a semiconductor material like selenium. This selenium is covered with still thinner layer of silver. This whole setup is enclosed in a plastic housing. The top portion of this housing is made of transparent material like glass. This transparent material allows light photons to pass and fall on the silver layer of the detector. The ohmic contacts at iron and silver selenium surface act as electrodes. Now, we will understand how current is produced when the light falls on the detector. As we already know, radiations are packets of energy called photons. When these photons fall on the barrier cell, the electrons at the silver selenium are excited and their energy increases. As a result, they are released from their bonds and are collected at collector electrode at silver selenium surface. When external load like a galvanometer is connected, the current flows and the photocurrent is set up. As the intensity of light increases, the number of photons increases, which releases more electrons, thus increasing the photocurrent. The next detectors fall in the classification of photoemissive cells. They are of three types. The first is high vacuum photoemissive cell. Photoemissive cells require external supply to operate. Vacuum photocell consists of two electrodes. Cathode is made of cesium deposited on base of silver oxide. Anode is generally actually centered wire at the focus of cathode. These electrodes are placed in high vacuum glass chamber. During operation, a potential difference is applied between cathode and anode with anode placed at high potential than cathode. When light photons fall on the cathode surface, they interact with cesium to release electrons. The electrons have negative charge and have affinity to positive charge. These electrons are attracted to anode, which is placed at the focus of cathode. When galvanometer is connected to the electrodes, it shows deflection as the current is set up due to the electrons released from the cesium surface. Again, the number of electrons released is dependent on the incident photons and thus intensity of light can be measured. The gas-filled photoemissive cells are the next type of photocells. They are same as high vacuum ones. The only difference is that they are filled with inert gas like argon. The next photoemissive detector is a photomultiplier tube, aka PMT. PMTs have high internal gain and are very sensitive to light photons. They are generally used for applications where light intensity is less, such as fluorescent spectroscopy. The tube consists of photosensitive cathode and multiple dynodes and an anode. The dynodes are placed at increasing potentials from cathode to anode. Each dynode is maintained at successively less negative potential. The cathode is placed at negative high voltage, typically ranging from minus 500 volts to minus 1500 volts. When photon strikes the photocathode, it ejects photoelectron due to photoelectric effect. This electron accelerates towards dynodes placed at higher potential. When this photoelectron hits the dynodes, additional electrons are generated 
at each of these dynodes. Due to multiple dynodes, around 10k to 10 million electrons are created for each photoelectron that ejects from the photocathode. The amplification is dependent on the number of dynodes and the accelerating voltage. Finally, these photoelectrons hit the anode which is at the highest potential than all the other electrodes and the photocurrent is set up. The next detector is silicon diode detector. The advantage of a silicon diode detector is low power supply and signal from the diode can be easily amplified using low noise op amp. When a photon strikes a semiconductor, it promotes an electron from valence band to conduction band. This creates an electron hole pair. The concentration of these pairs is dependent on intensity of light striking the semiconductor. In photodiodes, a voltage bias is present and concentration of these electron hole pairs will set up a photocurrent through the semiconductor which can be measured. That's all for this video. If you like the video, to subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends and peers. Hoping to hear from you in the comments below. Stay calm and keep learning. Peace out.